Warm welcome to tonight's virtual lecture brought to you by the Institute of Classical Architecture and Art, Louisiana chapter. Historic Tax Credits 2023, presented by Kelly Calhoun. I am Kevin Harris, president of the Louisiana chapter. In addition to lectures, we host educational workshops, salon visits to historic properties, and travel programs as part of our mission to advance the appreciation and manifest the principles of classicism and traditional architecture and its allied arts by engaging practitioners, students, educators, and architecture enthusiasts of Louisiana. If you're not already a member, please consider joining and helping us continue to offer these wonderful programs. You can join by visiting our website, www.classicist-la.org and clicking the Join tab, our Spring Salon. You won't want to miss signing up for our Spring Salon, which will be held on Wednesday, March 1, when we visit the historic Greek Revival, Egyptian Revival, U.S. Custom House on Canal Street in New Orleans. The tour will be followed up with lunch at Chemin a la Mer in the newly renovated Four Seasons Hotel. You won't want to miss this. You can sign up on Eventbrite at ICAA-LA Spring Salon 2023. The A. Hayes Town Awards. I am pleased to announce the ICAA Louisiana Chapter's inaugural A. Hayes Town Awards. This program is to recognize our current creators furthering both classical and traditional design in Louisiana. Categories include architecture, landscape and garden design, interior design, building arts, historic preservation, and student or emerging classicist work. Winners will be recognized in an award ceremony on June 17, 2023 at La Trobe's on Royal Street in New Orleans. For information on submitting your work, please visit www.classicist-la.org forward slash A. Hayestown Awards. Now to introduce Kelly Calhoun, our special guest behind tonight's event. A graduate of the Tulane's program in historic preservation, Kelly is no stranger to state and federal regulations pertaining to historic tax credits. Kelly has an extensive experience conducting research on historic buildings. In addition to her academic side, she holds a license in historic real estate where she brings an understanding of the fair market value of real estate trends and how this affects historic properties. Kelly's multidisciplinary experience in nonprofit educational and advocacy programs positions her as a trusted resource in this field. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to tonight's speaker, Kelly Calhoun. Kelly? Oh, that was wonderful, Kevin. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be here and excited to talk about historic tax credits. Uh, so for those of y'all that do not know me, I am a historic preservation consultant out of New Orleans, but I work all over the Gulf Coast. Uh, a lot of my clients end up coming to me um, because they want to do a renovation of a historic structure and they want to apply for historic tax credits, which is why we're all here today. Um, so actually the first thing I'm going to do is very important. We're going to open up a bottle of champagne because we're going to have fun. <laughs> and if you don't have any champagne or scotch, maybe you should go get one. <laughs> it is after all Mardi Gras in Louisiana and we're part Going of the cultural Going to get bourbon, heritage. I'll be right back. Yes, yes, please do. <laughs> all right. Technically this is sparkling wine, it's mum. Mum Brute. All right, ready? Let's do it. Wow, that was quite impressive. Yeah. Okay, and cheers, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. This is this is all about having fun, learning, and having fun while learning. Yeah. Okay. So with that, I think I am going to start sharing my screen, and we'll get started. Uh, by the way, if you would like to, as I'm going through the presentation, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, we'll answer questions at the end. Um, 
Yeah, so the chat's gonna be at more at the bottom and then you'll see the chat button and you can just put your question in there. Okay. Let's do this. Let's see. Okay, I hope everybody can see my screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Yes. Thank you, thank you for verifying. Okay, so details on the historic tax credit. Just to let y'all know, this is gonna be a little text heavy for the first couple of slides, but don't worry, we're gonna get into some photographs and, um, and pictures and examples later. So details on the historic tax credit. What is a tax credit? Uh, so it's basically a direct dollar for dollar reduction in the amount of money a taxpayer must pay in taxes for a given year. So for example, if a taxpayer owes $5,000 to the Louisiana Department of Revenue, but has a $3,000 credit, then they only pay $2,000. Um, a wonderful aspect of the historic tax credit program is that you do not have to use all of your tax credits in one tax year. You can carry it over for up to five years um, and even more in the federal, but we'll get uh, to that in a second. Uh, a little history about the historic tax credit program. It was designed um, in 1976 as an incentive program to um, restore historic structures through economic incentives. So the whole reason that this program works is it's an economic revitalization program. It's an economic incentive program, creating jobs, uh, creating a richer cultural heritage and a richer architectural heritage. Um, we're very passionate about the preservation and the education of classical architecture and art in this organization. Um, so this has become one of the largest tax credit programs in the United States history. Um, and this was a number from last year, lever leveraging about $174 billion in private investment. So you can start to get a scale of how, um, how much people are utilizing this on the state and federal level. Okay, so the Louisiana and the federal rehabilitation tax credit programs are very similar. Um, basically, there is um, uh, how it works is you, uh, let's say you purchase a property, you want to renovate that structure, and you're going to spend $100,000 doing it. This program was designed so that you renovate the historic structure utilizing certain preservation methods. And if you do what you say you're going to do, then the state gives you 20% of your renovation cost credited to your state taxes and the federal government will give you another 20% of your renovation cost credited to your federal taxes. Um, it's as, and both of the qualifications are very similar. For the Louisiana Commercial Rehabilitation Tax Credit, you have to be in what is known as a cultural district or a downtown development district. And I'll show you guys how to look up if your building is within these zones. Uh, the minimum that you have to spend to, to qualify for the Louisiana tax credit is $10,000, which as we know is easily attainable by just uh, painting the outside of your house or re-roofing. Um, you can use the tax credit for up to five years and you can sell your tax credit as well for about 75 cents on the dollar, if you're not gonna use it, or you don't have to use any of it. At the end of a renovation, if you decide, hey, I'd rather sell my credits, you can just go through a tax credit broker, sell your credit and get a little bit more cash uh, from it. Now the federal rehabilitation tax credit is very similar in some of its structure. You have to be in a national register historic district or you have to be individually on the National Register of Historic Places. Now, the minimum that you have to spend in order to qualify for the federal credit is what's called the adjusted base minimum. When you purchase a property, um, on the appraisal, there's usually a value called vacant land value. Um, it's a, a qualification where if there was no building on this lot, how much would the vacant land sell for? So you take your purchase price, and the vacant land value, 
you subtract that, and that's how much you have to spend in order to qualify for the federal rehabilitation tax credit. Depending on where you're purchasing, this may be easily attainable, um, but usually in a lot of metropolitan areas when you're spending a million dollars on acquiring the property and the vacant land value is maybe 300,000, 700,000 may be a little bit more than a lot of people can spend. Um, the reason that it's so high is because you can use the tax credit for a longer period of time. You can use it for up to 20 years. And again, the Louisiana Real, Real Rehabilitation Tax Credit, you can only use for five years, but the Federal Rehabilitation Tax Credit, you can use for 20 years. Um, as, a, as a result, you cannot sell the federal credit because you can use it for so long. Um, and a lot of people can uh, really benefit from either one. You do not have to use, you don't have to apply for both of these credits. If maybe you're only in a national register program, uh, national register district, you can just apply for the federal and get federal credits. If you're only in a Louisiana district, you can just go for the Louisiana credit. You can also use both. So think about that. When you're rehabilitating an historic structure, and 40% of your renovation costs can be credited back to you, to a taxable entity, that's a huge incentive to, uh, to utilize preservation methods. Yeah. I don't expect any one of you to read any of these, but basically it's like um, the, the, the 10 rules of rehabilitation that the Secretary of the Interior go by whenever they are qualifying a rehabilitation. Uh, basically, there's a set of rules um, and bulletins um, about window restoration, exterior um, renovation, site restoration. Um, all of this is basically to say, we encourage that you renovate a historic structure in the spirit of its architectural integrity and respect of its history. Not to say that you cannot update mechanical systems, put in central AC, put in insulation, um, make use and adapt the building to what you're trying to use it for. Um, however, they absolutely want you to renovate it with respect to the building's history and thinking about once you're finished with the building, how else can someone else use the building and benefit from its historic integrity. Um, the, um, so details on this historic tax credit, you have to get approved by the Division of Historic Preservation um, and they usually want you to wrap up a renovation within two years, 24 months. There's some leeway in that. You can, you can go a little bit beyond, but kind of as a general rule, they wanna get you wrapped up. That's because we vote for our tax brackets every year or every you know, few years, and you have to kind of get within the tax bracket that you're applying for. Um, for example, we used to have an 18% residential credit in Louisiana that a homeowner could use. Um, now, whenever I say homeowner, I mean owner-occupied structure. Um, it was underutilized, and so whenever the historic, uh, whenever the the uh, tax bracket was voted on, no one was utilizing it, and they had to allocate some of that tax uh, money into other programs. However, for the next tax bracket, we can introduce that back. Um, I should clarify: whenever we say the Louisiana Commercial Rehabilitation Tax Credit and the Federal Commercial Tax Credit. It has to be an income producing structure. It can be a residential income producing structure. You can purchase a, a property and people can live in it, but you have to receive income from it. Um, that's how this whole program is structured within the tax bracket. So a lot of people ask, well, what kind of costs qualify for the credit? Um, everything that is fixed to the building is a qualifying expenditure. This includes walls, nails, hammers, um, paint, plumbing fixtures, electrical wiring, chimneys, stairs, ceilings, drywall, hardwood floors, or tile. Um, 
anything that if you move all your furniture out, what's left, what do you see? That is a hard cost that is eligible for credit. Not only are hard costs eligible for a credit, but the soft costs during construction are eligible for a tax credit. Uh, for example, all of the utilities um, during construction um, are eligible for a tax credit. Uh, the consulting fees, you know, if you hire Kelly Calhoun and Calhoun Preservation, my fees would be eligible for 40%, up to 40% of a tax credit. If you hire a CPA to be your, uh, uh, to audit you, they would be eligible. Your architect like Kevin Harris, who specializes in historic structures, <laughs> his costs would be eligible. Engineering fees are, or, um, or uh, contractor fees are eligible. Um, real estate taxes during construction are eligible. So now you can start to see the costs start adding up a lot. If you're only doing a six month renovation, but in that time you've spent $3,000 on utilities and um, another 10,000 in architecture fees, already the things that are not related to the fixed part of the structure, you, uh, you've exceeded the Louisiana minimum and you're on your way to, um, to get the federal. What's not a qualified rehabilitation uh, credit is anything that's not attached to the structure um, and landscaping, demolition, uh, uh, um, excuse me, additions are not eligible because it's a new part of the structure. Kitchen appliances, um, cabinetry unless it's custom if you're hiring a carpenter to come in and do a custom cabinet then that would be eligible um but if you're going to lowe's and ordering i want the s05 and then no that's not because it's considered a movable it's it's something that people uh think i can unscrew it and i can take it with me um signage is not uh feasibility studies and financing fees any furniture um, marketing and advertising, sidewalks. Uh, just think about it. It's not attached to the structure. So it's not going to be an eligible cost for a credit. Everything that is attached to the structure and relating to the operation of the construction uh, during the time uh, that's being renovated, um, those are going to be eligible for a cost. Ooh, excuse me. Okay. So now that you got a little, you know, introduction into, okay, here's a general idea of uh, how do I know if my building is going to be um, uh, uh, eligible? Is it in the right districts? So if you go on the internet, the Louisiana uh, Division of Historic Preservation has a series of um, interactive maps, um, one called a Louisiana Tax Incentive Map that encompasses National Register, it encompasses um, cultural districts, depart, uh, uh, downtown development zones, economic zones, um, things like that. It's all right here. So the Louisiana tax incentive map, um, you just Google it and you start to zoom in on your property or you can put the address in and it goes automatically to it. Now, if you're an investor and you're wondering, Hey, you know, where should I look? I'm, I'm looking to purchase a property so I can renovate and use historic tax credits. This is a great wandering tool and resource for you to use to find um, eligible districts and potentially eligible buildings that will qualify for the state and uh, federal tax credits. Uh, so again, this is available on the internet. You don't have to sign up for anything, put in an email. It's on, um, it, it's, a, um, it's a free resource developed and updated by the Louisiana Division of Historic Preservation. The historic tax credit process is a three-part application series. The part one is a qualifier. Basically, you write a narrative of a physical description of the current building, and you write a narrative of why it's important in that district. Uh, that This is really where a consultant comes in handy. Um, a, a consultant can usually give you the language uh, to, to qualify historic structure. But just to give you an example, um, let's say you purchase property in Maroney and it is in the Faubourg Maroney Historic District. And the period of significance 
for the district is between 1805 and 1924. Your building was constructed in 1870. That's the statement of significance right there. My building is a one-story building and it has it, this architecture style. Here's what it looks like. And it was constructed in the period of significance for my historic district. And that is my qualifier. Um, it can be as thorough or as simple as you want it to be. It just has to be accurate and it has to accurately describe building and the history. So you send in the part one application. It has a 30 to 40 day, 45 day review period. And they just send you back kind of a checked off sheet saying, yes, we identified that this is a qualifying building for the state credit or the federal credit. And you can do both at the same time. You can send both of these in at the same time. Now the part two proposed work description, that is a very fun part of this application process. Let's all have a sip. So the proposed work description. This is usually about 18 pages. It sounds like a lot, but hear me out. Basically you describe the condition of an architectural feature and then what you propose to do with it. For example, let's start with foundation. Uh, foundation, um, my building is raised on brick piers, but the piers on, are, are uh, dipping into the soil because of water intrusion. Um, there's mortar loss and um, the wood floors are cracking as a result. Here's what I want to do with the foundation. I want to hire a structural engineer. I want them to use a lime-based mortar to repoint my brick piers. And I want to encapsulate my piers in stucco. So that's that's an example of what you, you know, how how it would describe you do foundation and you start you start to categorize things um, uh, in, in that frame of mind. Historic windows, or, or excuse me, windows would be a another feature. Floor plan is another feature, mechanical systems, kitchens, bathrooms, landscaping. Even though the cost for the landscaping is not eligible for a credit, you still have to let them know what you're planning to do with the surrounding property uh, just to monitor that you're not going to be um, accidentally damaging uh, some of the character defining features um, of the property. So that's the proposed work description. You, um, you send that in and it's another 30 to 45 day review period. And the part three application, oh, excuse me, before I move on to part three, I do wanna finish up with a part two note. They, you usually get a response back from the State Historic Preservation Office and the National Park Service, uh, giving you authority to say yes, you, we love what your application um, proposed for this historic structure, go ahead. Or they'll usually send back a couple of conditions. We generally approve, except that we do not want you to close off the double parlor. We want you to keep that the way it is. So, you know, the, you'll have to kind of go back and forth. Again, that's where a historic preservation consultant um, can really come in handy. To, to answer some of those questions at the beginning so that there isn't the back and forth between the government agencies and your project. You want this done kind of in one application process um, with the littlest hangups as possible. So the part three application is at the end of the renovation. You, um, you give photos and you say, here is, um, here's the finished product and here's photographs um, of, uh, the building, we said what we were going to do, and here's how much it cost in total, and here's how much I'm applying for, you know, uh, credits. Um, and then they'll send you back a form that you give to your CPA, and they will um, use the tax credit code on your tax return to credit the amount that you want onto your taxes. Um, so yeah, one, two, three, three part application process. Uh, this is for state and for federal. So the state has their own forms and the federal has their own forms. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, okay. 
there's all of the rules involved in it. Let's see one of them in action. So this is a historic structure in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Um, it is a law office um, operated now. And you can see it's kind of, it, it's classical revival architecture. It's got this grand oak tree in the front and uh, beautiful brick walkways. Um, this client reached out to me and said, hey, my, uh, my business partner and I have bought this property. We want to do some um, updates to the structure. We want to do a uh, renovation of it. Okay, great. First thing you do is check out if it's in the right zones. Well, all right. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Uh, can you see my mouse? Can someone nod? We can. Okay, thank you. Is that Thomas? Okay, so this is the Lake Charles Historic District boundary. See this black line? These are all of the, uh, this is the boundary and all the buildings that are inside uh, with architectural integrity are eligible uh, for this tax credit. My building, or excuse me, my client's building was right here, right outside of the boundary. And I had to come back to him and I'm like, I'm so sorry, your building is not in the boundary. But I'm highly confused because I'm seeing really, really old um, architectural features in here. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can make an application to change that boundary and include your structure within it. Well, I am so glad we did because in my research, this is the building that is this. Okay, let's look at that again. I could not believe that this was the same building. However, there was enough architectural integrity for us to qualify the building to apply for a boundary increase so that it can be eligible for the state and federal historic tax credit system. So this is the house that Pierce built. I had no other information except this one article. I had to write the, um, I think it's the American Press uh, newspaper in Lake Charles. I had to write them and said, hey, none of your newspapers are digitized for the public. Can you just see if this property has any kind of mention um, in your, and sure enough, in the 1990s, this article was written about the, um, this building, showing an historic structure and talking about the couple of years that a Dr. Pierce and his, his family lived here. Built in about 1902, it was renovated in about 1940 as a funeral home. However, it still kept the main massing, it still kept the dormers, it kept some window replacement, and it kept some other architectural features. So I had to go back and say, all right, okay, National Park Service, my building is eligible because at this moment in the United States history, um, Funerals stopped being held in the household and they started being um, uh, held within funeral homes. And guess what the architecture style that funeral homes like to be in in America? Colonial revival, uh, classical revival. All over the country, you can start dating, starting about 1940, all of these funeral homes, and you'll see them there, they're symmetrical, they're organized, they usually have some grandeur. This building represented a very important point in American history. So I had to write this narrative about it and we got approved for the boundary increase. Um, now, this right here was one of the best parts of, the, um, of seeing this structure because they put it on the side of the building. So again, see this Palladian window right here? They put it right here. And these, uh, these are not panes, these are window screens. The original windows, this one over one sash, it's still behind here. This is just a window screen. All, and this was all throughout the building. The original one over one windows are in every single place that they are pictured here. It was an incredible find. And I can't believe on my first go around visiting the, the site that I didn't notice that these were not actually uh, window sashes, that they were window screens. But hey, I mean, you can just, there's a lot to look at with this, with this structure. 
Um, and then they even repeated this architectural feature at, um, at the entrance, this arch. You can see that here. Um, again, this was just a close-up of some of the window screens. Um, and so we got to qualify it for it. Um, here's what the, um, here's how they end up being filled out. Uh, the foundation, so you can start to see, it, it can get wordy, it can also be pretty succinct. So it just kind of depends building to building. Some architectural features have more uh, integrity than others. Um, if you have an, a set of architecture drawings, you cite them in here and um, in photos. I, uh, this was the attic of the structure. I loved seeing the, um, the, Mansford, the Mansard roof that was featured in the original photo. You can see it here, even though right now the parapets, you cannot see that the roof structure is here. Uh, so this was also an important qualifier for the structure. Now, they had two additions whenever they did a, um, the, um, the, uh, re the uh, adaptation into the funeral home. This is part of it. So in the rear here, you see these two front gabled, one-story raised structures. These became the offices of the funeral home. These um, trees right here started to do some major damage to the foundation. So as much as in like, you know, I, I love trees, I love gardening, these had to go because they were causing some major damage. So we had to, again, get up close and personal um, in, into the roots, get under the structure and show where the roots were causing some structural damage and, and qualify their removal. Um, in the, um, in the uh, in the house, this is the foyer. You come in, and that is the original staircase. And I am shocked that they did not paint it white because white was a big classical revival um, paint color choice. But uh, they carpeted it, and they did put some kind of uh, screen right here. But look, you can see these turn spindles right here. This is all Victorian, and so everywhere there there are these just these little gingerbread um, clues of the house that we saw when Dr. Pierce and his family lived here. Excuse me. This was the interior of the, the 1940s one-story additions in the back. They had put a drop ceiling. Uh, There's some, some tile that was put here. Everything was just, it hadn't been appropriately renovated over time. And part of our scope of work was correcting some of these inappropriate changes that people made. We had to submit a floor plan and we had to put an egress stair. This was one of the biggest headaches that I've ever had to deal with. We probably went through 10 different versions of egress stairs, but finally, this is what the SHPO wanted. And uh, the cost for it was an eligible expense. In order to get this done, we had to do a rendering of what it would look like with some planted trees eventually. Uh, so this is where the landscaping part of your application really starts to come in handy because then uh, they can see when these trees mature on the other side of the egress stair, the, the egress stair is not going to be as noticeable. So again, it's just monitoring change over time and not trying to tell you what to do. And this is right before we uh, did the plantings, uh, but I did want to show you that. Okay, so um, at the end of it, we got to take the screens off. We got to um, um, finish up the tax credit process. We wanted to return the original stain color to these arches. So we had to make a little narrative of the history of wood stain during the Victorian period and say they would never have painted their woodwork white. They would have had a dark stain. And here are some examples in books, movies, um, like uh, a big room was like Meet Me in St. Louis with Judy Garland, watch that movie. We use that as a resource in our historic tax credit application. We took off the uh, metal guardrail here to highlight the stairs. Uh, we took out all of the inappropriate tile and restored the wood floors. There was a big wall here that we got to take off. There was a wall that was dividing this room into two spaces. 
This was encapsulated with drywall. We took that drywall out and this whole thing with the Italian tile is perfectly uh, per in perfect condition. So basically all we had to do was lift that, that drywall off and do a little cleaning and it was great. So the part three application, here's what you send in. It's a very um, simple application. It's just pictures and this form. Um, I have given all of my clients a template for keeping their costs uh, organized during renovation. This is the Louisiana Department of Revenue certification of credit that you'll receive at the end of your uh, property. And here we go. At the end of um, the application, this process was uh, approved for a 20% tax credit uh, for the state of Louisiana of $176,000 and a federal credit also of $176,000 for a total tax credit of $352,000 that we got to um, apply uh, towards this renovation. And it took a little bit of research, but that's where doing your his, that's where doing your research and going through historic newspapers really come in handy for a uh, projects like these. Um, yeah, so I I'd love some questions. Uh, do you guys have any questions out there, uh, Courtney or Kevin? Do you want to read them out to me? Hi Kelly, can you hear me? Hi, yes, I can. Hey Kelly, um, this is Courtney LeBlanc. I'm the chapter coordinator. Hi, Courtney LeBlanc. So we have three questions that came through. First off, do you have do you have to hire a historic preservation consultant to apply for historic tax credits? The beauty is no, you do not have to hire somebody if you do, if you don't want to. Some of the fun of doing a historic tax credit um, application is doing the research behind some of the work. You do not have to um, have a consultant on the team. If you know that this is gonna be a big project, it's very, very nice to have it. But legally, absolutely not. You can do this yourself. Anybody can do this as long as they um, fill out all the portions correctly. That's a great question. Okay, so second question, can multiple people split tax credit? Absolutely. So at the beginning of the application process, you usually say, uh, um, who's applying for the tax credits? It can be an LLC, it can be one person. By the part three, you can assign one taxable entity to receive the tax credit, or you can assign multiple entities to um, receive the credit. And these entities do not have to invest in the property in order to be eligible. They don't have to be involved at all. Um, there have been some situations where I've been doing renovations that are like, hey, you know, I've got a silent partner on this. Uh, they're in California, they're in California, but they have property here. They're a Louisiana taxable entity. I'd like to give 50% of the tax credit to that person. Even though they didn't contribute one cent, that's irrelevant. You can assign um, the tax credit to whoever you want. Um, and up to a certain point, as many people as you want. That's as really long as they are taxable. So for example, a nonprofit cannot be a recipient of that because they do not get taxed. You have to be taxable in order to receive the credit. And as long as that is, um, as long as you're assigning it to an entity that can be taxed within the state or the federal, I'm sorry, the state, um, then yeah, you can. You can assign a lot of people. We have one last question. If you've already begun your renovation, can you still qualify? That is a, okay. Yeah, short answer is yes. Long answer is, you know, have you done enough? How, how, how far have you gotten into the, the renovation? Did you take out a lot of original elements? That's where you probably want to get a little bit of guidance. But if, if, if you're securing the structure, if you're just like, hey, I really need to get the, the peers repointed quick and I can't wait for the tax credit you know, application to be approved. Yes, you can start with, with those kinds of reasonable um, costs before applying. However, like the State Historic uh, Preservation Office says, 
The safe answer is just apply first. You can also call the, historic, uh, the State Historic Preservation Office and request an on-site visit for them to give you a consultation. They won't fill out the application for you um, and monitor the renovation like a consultant does, but they'll come in and they'll tell you um, this is not eligible or this is eligible. Um, and so they'll, they'll walk the, the process, the, um, your, your project with you as long as you give them enough time to schedule a site visit. And they do this all over Louisiana. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you've definitely given, given us a lot to think on. We're now gonna to turn to Kevin to wrap us up. All right, well, thank you, Kelly. This was awesome. I, uh, as an architect, I'm gonna uh, share this with uh, many of my clients, uh, several, who, um, several who have historic buildings. I need to uh, check the zone that they're in, if they're in these uh, approved areas. Uh, but a 40% tax break on anything that you build is amazing. That is awesome, and it's great for historic preservation, and it's uh, uh, it's great for our society. I think this is wonderful. So thank you so so much for uh, presenting this. What I'd like absolutely. to absolutely, really, my pleasure. Thank you for having right. me. What I'd like to do is, is remind everyone that uh, uh, if they're if they would like to see and participate in more of these types of uh, uh, presentations, please consider joining if you're not already a member the ICAA. Uh, Louisiana chapter. In addition to that, uh, we've got a salon coming up in March that will be touring the U.S. Custom House, which is awesome. Uh, it's You're not allowed in unless you're, you've got uh, custom business, but we're being allowed in. We're going to see this amazing uh, rotunda and courtyard uh, inside the building, or, or, and it's just amazing. I've seen it in architectural drawings only and photographs, and I, as an architect, am excited about seeing that. So please uh, consider joining us uh, on that. And uh, as part of that, we'll have lunch uh, on the top of the uh, uh, Chemin a la Mer and be able to look at the Mississippi River and, and have some talks on, on the views that you see of uh, New Orleans. Uh, in addition to that, if you're a designer or creator, you don't have to just be an architect. You could be a landscape architect, interior designer, a craftsman, a cabinet maker. It doesn't matter. Uh, there's a category for you. And uh, we have our first annual awards program to celebrate uh, classical and traditional architecture and the creatives that make these things in Louisiana today. So please, uh, 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 thank you. Thank you, Kelly, for your presentation. Uh, and. Uh, I look forward to seeing many of you at, uh, at our future events. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And if anyone's going to be doing a historic tax credit application process, let me know because I think we're going to do a series of before and after, which will be absolutely fun. So my contact information is on the internet, Kelly Calhoun with Calhoun Preservation. All right, great. Well, I look forward to seeing you all again. And thank you again, Kelly. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Right.